Hi, I'm Shang, and welcome to my channel where I share ideas and tools that bring us closer to becoming the best versions of ourselves. Today, I want to share with you some of the most important learnings that I've had from meditations. The personal journal of Marcus Aurelius, the last great Roman emperor. Stoicism is a 2,000 year old philosophy that has inspired generations of people from Roman emperors to CEOs and activists. For me, it has played a personal role in shaping who I am and in bringing me through some hard times. So without further ado, let's dive in. And before we start, a little bit about our surroundings today. This is Land's End in California, in San Francisco to be specific. And it is literally where the coast meets the Pacific Ocean. And what you're hearing around you is the ocean, the birds, and hopefully it's not overwhelming. This is perhaps the, uh, <laughs> the most challenging environment where I had to set up an entire camera uh, rig. And uh, these shoes are definitely not the best since uh, they're kind of leather shoes for the street, right? But I do hope that you enjoy this change of scenery as we talk about meditations, the personal journal of the Roman emperor. All right, let's go. So what I love about Aurelius is that he is a practitioner of what he does. He puts into practice philosophy because as the most powerful man of his time, he needed a toolkit to lean on in order to lead his country and in order to build up essentially an empire, right? So in a lot of ways, this man is both a philosopher, but also he does what he says, a man of action, if you will. And Meditations is a compilation of his personal journals that he wrote in both Rome as well as on the Eastern Front while he was facing the Germanic barbarians expanding Rome's borders. So in aggregate, they are a reflection of you know, his psyche and his mind at the time as he was going through all these different challenges, the reminders that he wanted to have for himself. In these books, he is grappling with his own existence, his identity as a man and as you know, a human being as well as a ruler of others and you know, the meaning of the universe of sorts, right? Of everything around him. And in it, I have been able to find quite a few passages that's really resonated with some of the life circumstances I've faced. All right, let's go through a few of these. Um, but wait a moment. I gotta put on a, uh, a down vest because this wind chill is definitely no joke. This is nature for you, right? You never know what's gonna bring. Sometimes it delivers like today, and other times it can be cloudy as hell. Um, but regardless, it is windy and it is cold. So this guy's going on. Chilly. One of the most important things that I gained from Stoicism is the concept of our thinking makes our reality. Thinking makes it so. And that we actually have control over the way we perceive what the external world throws at us. And we have a choice in determining how we react to what happens to us. I think this particular passage illustrates it really well when he says, when you fret at any circumstance, you have forgotten a number of things. That the wrong done lies with the other. That everything which happens was always so in the past and will be the same again in the future. That all is as thinking makes it so. That each of us only lives the present moment and the present moment is all we have to lose. So there are three things to be gained from just this one passage, right? The first one is that when we are, let's say, stressed out or angered by you know, the wrong that somebody has done to us, first of all, that wrong lies with the other person, right? It's already bad enough that we've been hurt by them. It's even worse if we dwell on it and be angered by it, be sad by it, by really, you know, essentially having our quality of life being decreased by continuously reliving that particular moment into the future. What matters is the present moment because that's all we have. We don't know what's, what the mo next moment is gonna bring if, or if we're actually gonna be around, right? 
So all we have to lose is the present moment. Leave things in the past where they belong so that we can move on with our lives. And then he reminds us that things can't touch the mind. They are external and inert. Anxieties can only come from your internal judgments. That all these things you see change almost as you look upon them. The universe is change. Life is judgment. What that means is that the universe, you know, whatever happens to us, including ourselves, it's constantly changing, right? And this was really vividly illustrated to me during a snow camping trip, you know, that going into camp, I had left these deep footprints in the snow from my snowshoes. The surprising thing is just two days afterwards, I had set up camp and I was going back the same way. My footprints that were like, you know, three feet deep, basically were almost completely covered by the snow. It was almost like I didn't make a dent in nature, right? So this really told me that everything is very ephemeral. That, you know, even these feelings of hurt or guilt or anything, they eventually do pass, right? And that the present moment is the most important. And it was such a good reminder that just how brief, you know, our existence is on this earth. Which brings us to the opinions and judgment of others. I realize reminds us to not hold to the opinions of all and to disregard even the praise of those who are not even satisfied with themselves. That is to say that all too often we live for praise, we live for recognition from often the wrong sources, right? From people who may not know us, who may not see us, and who might not even have you know, the best judgment for themselves, right? So to crave the praise of even such people, um, it is to do ourselves an injustice, especially when we become addicted to it, addicted to getting a ton of likes for a photo that we had shot, you know, that we post on Instagram, right? And in a lot of ways, it can also happen at work where we could be, you know, chasing the praise or the recognition from certain people, but at the expense of doing the right thing for the company. And I'm guilty of this in so many ways in my own life. Uh, on a personal level, for example, you know, chasing the praise of people for setting up events, of organizing things. So rather than just bringing value to people, that was, you know, that should be, have been enough. Uh, in a lot of ways, you know, that recognition was very addictive. I am guilty of this whenever I, you know, I post something on Instagram and if I feel <laughs> sad that nobody liked it or something like that, right? Or putting something on, into the interwebs. And I like to remind myself often that, you know, the reason why I'm here is to touch lives uh, for the better, right? And even if I'm able to help like a handful of people, like five people, um, that is enough. It's not about a numbers game. I'm not trying to chase the praise of everyone, right? I think only those who I think, you know, can really take some of what I can give and make something even greater out of it. That to me is probably the best reward. And on the professional level, I've seen startup founders essentially forget the problem that they're trying to solve in the world. They tend to forget their users and they try to chase certain metrics that will look good, for example, to investors, right? like revenue and turnover. And at the end of the day, I will always ask them, you know, who are you trying to impress ultimately? Is it the users who should matter or is it the investors who are, you know, looking at you as a commercial vehicle, right? What is your mission? All right guys, the sun is setting and it's getting cold. So I'm gonna leave you with one last thing before I head back up. And this is the key to happiness, which is to do little. Most of what we say and do is not necessary. Remove the superfluity and you will have more time and less bother. This is definitely a testament to the minimalistic lifestyle, which is ultimately about 
thinking about what is essential in your life and leaning into that, right? So much of the complications in our lives are made by ourselves, are taken on um, when we feel like it will enhance our lives, but ultimately it actually just makes it more burdensome. Anyways, I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much for chiming in and sharing this moment with me. I really appreciate you and I am honored to be able to share these learnings and passages with you. All right, I hope that you will have a great rest of the day and I will see you hopefully soon. Take care now. Meditations. All right, we've got the bike hooked up to the camera, which is stationed here. Uh, I have no idea how the audio is gonna be, so please bear with me if uh, it's a little bit crappy. It's my first time trying to set up in probably the most challenging environment I've done so far. Uh, but yeah, wish me luck.